Building a house from the ground up is the American dream, but it doesn't come easy. Before this Austin couple can move into their four bedroom ranch, they'll have to build it themselves. While three small children and unexpected problems That's awful! Dear God! Push them to the edge. Oh, what the hell? I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. They'll go from a vacant lot to a self-built dream home, all in the next 30 minutes on Half Hour House. Chip and Alicia Tranzu are living in a tiny rental house with their three kids, Mackenzie, Katie, and Jack. Look, got all the food on the ground. Who's gonna eat that? But soon, if all goes well, they'll be moving into their dream house, which Alicia designed herself. I designed this house on super cheap software. The new house will be a one-story, because I find that to be a lot easier with kids running around. It's gonna have four bedrooms, so each child will have their own bedroom, and three and a half bathrooms. I want a bigger closet and more storage. But before they move in, they have to build the house themselves from the ground up. My dad was a builder. I've been around the building industry my whole life. We decided that building was the way to go because we could get what we wanted with the resources that we had and end up with more of a house. Chip and Alicia will act as builders, doing much of the work themselves, but hiring contractors when necessary. They're no strangers to hard work and collaboration. For 10 years, they've run their metal fabrication business, Made of Metal. Made of Metal, this is Chip. Okay, let me let you speak with Alicia real quick. Alicia and I work great together. We've been together since we were 17, so I think we've worked out most of the kinks. He lets me do all the design stuff, and he doesn't argue with me, and I let him figure out how to do all the technical stuff. She's very organized. I kind of shift on the fly. We pick up where the other one leaves off. Watch your finger. The transits are putting the metal business on the back burner while they build their house, so they have to finish quickly to start making money again. The first step, pouring the concrete foundation. All in a single day. Today we'll just have concrete track after concrete track coming in. Time is of the essence. They need to pour and smooth out everything before it begins to dry under the hot Texan sun. The biggest problem today is keeping the concrete coming on a steady basis. If we don't have concrete trucks flowing on time, then we can get some honeycombing in the slab. Honeycombing occurs when fresh concrete is poured over concrete that's already begun to cure. Air pockets can form, weakening the house's foundation. To get the slab poured quickly, the cement contractors are using a pump truck to carry the concrete from the mixers to the slab. The standard concrete truck you see driving down the road with a spinning barrel pours all of its concrete into a hopper which then gets picked up by the pump and pumped through a pipe that runs over a big crane boom and then down through this nozzle so that the concrete guys can direct it around anywhere they need it. The pump truck is essential when pouring slabs larger than 2,000 square feet. But just as the slab is nearing completion, there's a problem. Chip and Alicia are short one truckload of concrete. What the hell? If not enough concrete is there, that's bad for the slab. As the slab starts to dry, Right now, it's kind of a critical phase. The hunt is on for one more cement truck. The guys uh, stop pumping. Right now, we're kind of at a standstill. In 2010, what percentage of new U.S. single-family houses were owner-built? Was it A, 4.8%, B, 10.7%, C, 14.4%, or D, 20.1%?
We asked, in 2010, what percentage of new U.S. single-family houses were owner-built? The answer? B. 10.7%. In Austin, Texas, Chip and Alicia Tranzu are building their four-bedroom ranch home themselves. They almost have their foundation poured when they run out of concrete. A major problem that could ruin the house's foundation. We can get concrete that's already curing under uh, new concrete and get their air pockets in there and it's called honeycombing and it weakens the slab. That's awful! Dear God! As Chip tries to track down one more truckload of concrete, okay, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be upset if that's the truth. Work on the slab comes to a halt. Right now we're kind of at a standstill. The guys have uh, stopped pumping. They only have two hours to finish, or part of the slab may have to be torn up and re-poured. We had no idea that the slab was gonna be so tall in the front. Not enough concrete was ordered, not enough trucks were coming, so there was a delay. This is Chip. Finally, one of their calls pays off. Oh. <laughs> and one final cement truck rolls onto the site. Awesome. Perfect. That's what we were looking for. The day is saved, and the foundation is in. <laughs> one week later, the foundation is fully cured. It's time to frame the house. Where's Jack's room? Show me your room. Yay, that's Jack's room! Now, Chip and Alicia have to plan out the placement of every duct, plumbing line, and electrical fixture. This room has two vanity lights. They're gonna be wall? Yeah. This part of the build is pretty critical. If something goes wrong here, we place a light in the wrong spot, Later, it's a matter of pulling out sheetrock to get it fixed and then having a sheetrock repair. So it's very inconvenient if we miss things at this point. But it isn't easy to focus on wiring with two-year-old Jack on the loose. How deep is your refrigerator? 30. Did you get sugar this morning or something? I gave him tater tots. <laughs> Juggling our home life and what we're doing here gets a little bit stressful. Come here. Go sit on the tractor. Right, it's kind of noisy back here, but that's okay. One of the character flaws with both Alicia and myself is we think we can do everything. While Chip works at the site. All right, let's go. Come on. Alicia heads to the shop to accept delivery of the tub for the master bathroom. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Then races across town to pick the girls up from school. Hey, girls. Did you have a good day? <laughs> Later, after a day shift on the build, Chip works a night shift at the shop to keep the business going. I've been coming home at five, having dinner with everybody, put the kids to bed, and then I head back up here until 11, 12 at night, but I'm not missed. The kids don't even know that I'm gone, so. I miss um, you, honey. I know. I know you miss me. After another month of round-the-clock work, the transus are exhausted. I'm starting to get really, really, really tired. I kind of hit the wall this week. It's getting tough. And just when Chip and Alicia are reaching the end of their rope, they get a call from the water department. Their water hookup won't hook up to water. We thought we did our homework before we started building, and we got an appointment with the water district, and they told us that we had water to the corner of our lot over there. And apparently that was wrong, so when they came back out to hook up the water, they told us that it's on the wrong side. The transus will have to pay to dig up a road and run water from the other side of their lot. So how much, how much would that be? $8,400 on water. To stay on budget, Chip and Alicia race to move in early. We're getting out of here so we don't have to pay another month's worth of rent. But can they get their new house done in time? Good grief, man. Oh! It's too big? Yep. <sighs> 
In Austin, Texas, Chip and Alicia Tranzu are working around the clock, building their own ranch-style dream house. And they've just found out that their water hookup doesn't lead to the water line. We were told by our water district that the lines were on a different side of our lot than they actually were. So we had to pay a lot of money to the county so they could cut the road to bring the pipes to the right side of the lot. How much more money? $8,400 more. That added expense busts the Transu's budget. That was a pretty big hit. To save money, they're changing plans and moving into the house in just three weeks, two months ahead of schedule. So we're actually saving February and March's rent because our lease was through the end of March. But that means they'll have to pick up their already breakneck pace. <laughs> to save time, Chip and Alicia will do a lot of the finish work themselves, starting with molding. Hey, Alicia, you're short on some of these. The time pressure tests their work relationship like never before. She's doing 10 things and I'm doing 10 things and they're not necessarily the same 10 things. So it gets a little tough. What you need to do, turn it off. Because the laser's not accurate. It's hit the T. What's the point of having a laser if it's not accurate? But I don't think there's a point to Sometimes he just starts doing things and I have no idea what he's doing and I have no patience. The molding complete, Chip and Alicia move on to the next job on their long to-do list, the kitchen island. Chip has a tool he hopes will speed the work along. Chip has every tool on the earth. This is a collated screw gun. It's really for decking. It's set up so that you can do repeated screws. Bam, bam, bam. It's only for us cool people. Right. Uh, do you trust me to shoot this with the collated screw gun? Don't mess up my cabinets. This could be fun. If I screw your hand, you won't be mad, will you? Yes. Then you better get it out of the way. Oh, that was a bad idea. Good grief, man. Hey, if it worked, it was going to be really fast. I've never even heard of that tool before. It's awesome. While Chip and Alicia race to meet their deadline, outside, workers pour the concrete driveway and install the garage door. And plumbers hook up the tub in the master bath. Think we're good? The day before moving, Chip and Alicia still have a lot to do, starting with the kitchen island. Watch your fingers. The island is so big, more like a continent, that several pieces of butcher block will have to be customized to work. We got three eight-foot slabs of butcher block, and then I'm gonna put some construction adhesive down this joint and bar clamp it together. We'll let that one dry, and then we'll do the same thing. We'll go ahead and glue this one on right now. Once the glue is in place, the two countertops have to be held snug while it dries, or the joint will be weak. This pipe clamp is just what it is. You go to the hardware store and you buy a piece of pipe with threading on one end, and this piece, acts like a clamp. They are fantastic for putting tension laterally on this, which will hold it together and let this glue set. While the glue sets on the countertop, Chip and Alicia move on to installing metal doors Chip fabricated in their shop. Bingo. Let's see how it works. Yay! Perfection. I actually saw it on a super high-end house that we did a job on a long time ago and I really liked it, and so we kind of copied it. And Only gonna, better. We're we, gonna... we improved on the design. I am really good. The doors are still missing their frosted glass panels, but Chip and Alicia have run out of time. The next day, they have to move out of their rental house. We're getting out of here so we don't have to pay another month's worth of rent. We still don't have some things like towel bars and toilet holders. Not an ideal situation to be moving in like this. Where's my picture gonna go? Over the mantle. We don't have 
have a mantle. One problem that still remains, their custom metal doors. Oh, come on. We have some glass missing on the front and back doors, which is kind of important since it's cold. So I was hoping that would get done. I will do that now. And... Excuse me, and I'll go get the glass. They've got frosted panels of tempered glass from a local glass shop, custom cut to fit the door. There's just one problem. 14 and 15, 6, uh-oh. That's a little bit big. Here goes nothing. Oh! It's too big? Yep. It's gonna be freezing tonight, and bugs and animals, <laughs> I mean, anything that wants to could just come right in. It's not looking good. Drastic times. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Call for drastic measures. I'm not supposed to be doing this. In Austin, Texas, Chip and Alicia Tranzu are building their own four-bedroom ranch-style home. They moved in early to save some money, but there's a problem with the glass for their custom metal doors. Oh! It's too big? Yep. <sighs> Crock of The house is unsecured. Anyone who wants to come in can... It's kind of an important thing to have a front and back door. The glass should go back to the shop to be cut down, but with power tools close at hand, Chip can't resist doing it himself. There are no special tricks to grinding your glass on this because that I can give you because I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. And from what I understand, I'm not supposed to be doing this. Tempered glass, you have a very finite amount that you can actually take off of it before the whole thing fails. I'm using just a regular grinder with a sanding wheel on it. It's taking a tiny bit off. With the glass ground down and still in one piece, Chip thinks it will fit in the door frame. I'm putting some a silicone bed down before we tilt our glass into there. Moment of truth, this is our new and improved 1 16th of an inch smaller glass. I don't want to ever push too hard in case it's too small. It'll go right through. But we're good. After installing four more panes of frosted tempered glass, the problem is solved. The door is all installed. The glass is in. It's a little bit dirty, but um, we're secure. Everybody's happy. I think it was a good idea to move in, even though it's going to be a disaster for a few days, just to save that rent money. What happened? Ready to go to school. It's been a long day, and there's still work to be done. But Chip and Alicia call it a night. In five months, the Transus have gone from an empty lot to a four-bedroom, 3,300-square-foot ranch-style dream house. I love my new home. I love everything about it. It's perfect for us. We're finally fully settled in. Couldn't be happier. It's exactly what we planned. My favorite features of the house are the kitchen living area. We made it one big open area so that when I'm in the kitchen cooking, I can still see the kids watching TV. We can all be in one large room together. My favorite room in the house is the master suite. We were inspired by a couple of hotel rooms that we've been in, and just having that suite feel, relaxing. The shower divider and the master bathroom was based off the design of the front and back door. It almost feels like the shower flows into the rest of the room so that the bathroom feels much more spacious than it actually is. I have all my storage, I have my huge closet, and the kids have places for all their clothes and toys. Probably one of the things that we're most proud of is the front and back door that Chip made. I couldn't afford the metal products that I make if I was having to buy them for myself. 
we chose to go with a metal and glass garage door. We wanted something different since that's the first thing you see when you drive up the driveway. I would recommend building your own home to other people if they go in well educated. We definitely end up saving a lot of money. It would have cost us 30% more had we not built it ourselves, just because you have to pay builder's fees and the work that we did do ourselves. Even with a tight budget, we still came in 10% under budget. This process was absolutely worth it. It feels great to be in our new home. <laughs>